All right, let's practice translating algebraic equations or, or sentences in the f in the form of of math into um, English sentences. Okay, so this is, this is a good skill to develop because actually the 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 language of math was developed in order to describe things that um, we humans understand and need to talk about. So you can you can go both ways. You can you can turn uh, normal everyday speech into math, and you can turn math into normal everyday speech, for the most part, um, until you get into some crazy complex math that only really math can describe. But anyway, um, w we'll deal with some fairly straightforward stuff. Um, if these equations cause you to feel anxiety, fear not. Um, I just I wanted to give you these because these are real world equations. These are physics physics equations. So I, I thought they would be more interesting than this kind of thing. Uh, but this kind of thing is simpler. Um, 45 equals 5x plus 8, that kind of stuff. And that's probably the kind of stuff that you'll see the most um, in your textbook. So we'll get to this. We'll get to the simpler one. Um, but first, I want to kind of challenge you and also give you something that is a little bit more interesting uh, by giving these, giving you these, um, these pretty pretty famous physics equations and well, well you practice the skill so you actually you'll see what these physics uh, what these physics equations are, are actually saying um, first before that uh, I wanted to give you some ways of translating these operators um, you know if you see a plus sign a minus sign or something's being multiplied uh, or divided or if you see some powers uh, here's here's ways you can translate that uh, at least into English. So plus, um, so all this would mean, you know, the plus sign could mean plus or the sum of or added to, combined with or e increased by. Those, those are all valid ways of describing this this math symbol. Um, minus, difference of, subtracted from, decreased by. That's all kind of conveying the mathematical idea of, of subtraction. Um, multiplication, you can talk about something being multiplied by something else, you can talk about the product of those two things. A lot of times if you just see the word of, you know, like 5% of some number, um, that just means to multiply. Um, you might see, you know, you could buy a factor of, uh, you know, if you see it, talk about something being increased by a factor of 4, you know, you take that thing and you multiply it by 4. And then uh, for dividing you know, the quotient of or per, you know, three dollars per gallon. Uh, that means three um, dollars divided by one gallon. Um, or out of, you know, the idea of a fraction, three out of four would be three divided by four, three over four, um, over divided by. And there's, I mean, there's other ways of describing these, these things too. These are some of the ones that are um, a little less obvious, I think. So I wanted to point those out. But you can trust your instincts, trust your intuition. Um, if if a word comes to mind, it's probably gonna be it's probably gonna be about right. You should try it. Uh, and if you see something, you know, raised to the power of two or raised to the power of three, you can talk about the square of or the cube of or you know or to the power of two, or the power of three, or the power of four. Something like that. So let's let's look at these equations and and uh, translate them into English. And for these physics equations, I tell you what the the variables stand for. Um, so he, you know, here's the classic one: e equals m c squared. Everybody's heard that equation, most famous physics equation, uh, in you know that you know today. So what is it actually saying? So E stands for energy, M stands for mass, and C stands for the speed of light. So a way we could translate this is, um, all right. So what's first of all, what what operations are happening here? Uh, M and C are being multiplied. You know, two variables that are just next to each other. And that just means that they're that they're being multiplied, and then C is being raised to the power of two. Uh, or it's it's squared, you know, that's c squared. So um, what we could say is something like energy um, is equal sign is is or is equivalent to 
energy is mass times the speed of light squared. Or we could say uh, energy is the product of mass and the square of the speed of light. That would be another valid way of, of describing it. What else could we do? Um, a, I'm trying to think. Uh, that's good. Let's, let's move on. Um, here we've got F equals MA. Um, F stands for, I believe this is, um, this is Newt's, Newton's first or second law. Um, I want to say second, but I'm actually not. I think second, but you can look it up. So F equals MA. F, F stands for force. M, uh, again, is mass. And A is acceleration. So we can say force force is the product of mass and acceleration or force is the mass multiplied by the acceleration um what else um that, that's good i think that's good let's try one that's a little bit more complicated um so f stands for force uh, the force between two masses and this is the universal law of gravitation uh, another, another another genius product of Newton. Um, so this is the force between two masses. You know, say like how about the planet Earth and the Moon. So what's the force between them? Uh, so F is the force between two masses. G is the gravitational constant. That's just constant. It's um, I don't know. You can look up what the actual value of that constant is. Uh, M1 is the first mass. M2 is the second mass, you know, if we're calling Earth the first math, mass, and the Moon could be the second mass if we're trying to figure out the gravitational force between the Earth and the Moon. And then R is the distance between the two masses. R stands for the distance between the two masses. So let's, let's try to translate this. So what, what, what do we have going on? We've got um, this whole thing is being multiplied by G, the gravitational constant. Uh, and then we've got the, the two masses are being multiplied together. And then they're being divided by um, the distance, and that distance is, is being squared. So a lot of things are going on here. And if this is too much, don't sweat it. This is just practice. This is this is getting you you used to the idea of of that these these math equations really are actually saying something about the world, and we can we can say that something um, in languages other than math. Okay, so if, um, we could try. Let's try this. Um, force the force between two masses um, is the product of the product of the gravitational constant and uh, the quotient of the product of the first mass and the second mass and the distance between the two masses squared. Um, that's a lot, and that would be confusing. Just try to translate that back into the equation would be difficult. Uh, let's let's do it this way. Um, the force between two masses is is the product of uh, the first mass and the second mass divided by the square of the distance between them multiplied by the gravitational constant. I think that's clearer. Um, you could also, I'm going to leave it at that. You can play around with that and see if you can describe it in a different way. Um, okay, so let's just try this kind of, you know, it's kind of standard textbook type equation uh, where, uh, you know, the variable doesn't re really mean anything and the, the equation is not really accomplishing anything grand like these are. Okay, but, you know, it's a little bit more straightforward. So we could say, so what's being, ha what's happening here? Uh, these two things, these terms are being added together and then five and some number are being multiplied together. So we could we could we could call this forty five is the sum of the product of five and some number and eight. Or uh we could say forty we could say um five times some number um comma added uh added to Eight is forty-five. And actually, I should mention that that um, 
using commas when you, if you are writing this out uh, on paper or on a computer, can really kind of clear up some ambiguity. Um, uh, here's here's why. Why don't I explain this? Because um, I could have when I say um, the product of five and some number plus eight. Uh, I could mean the product of five and some number plus eight, or I could, or I could mean the product of five and some number plus eight. Does that make sense? The difference. Um, so if I want to say this version, I would say um, the product, the product of five and some number plus eight, or added to eight showing that you do this step after you do this step. If I want to say this, it would be the product uh the product of five um the product of five and some number plus eight. No comma. So it's the product of five and then this whole thing would be called some number plus eight. Okay? So be careful with the ambiguity in language and you can use commas to kind of clear things up. Use a comma when you want to separate the steps. If, you're, if you want to take the product of some number, and then you want to add 8, put a comma, and then add 8. Okay? So, here's some of the key words you can use when you see these different operations. Um, you can play around with the order in which you say stuff. Um, aim to express the equations in the clearest way possible, so that if someone else were to look at your uh, written out sentences, they would be able to translate it into the proper equation, um, the equation that you started with. All right, good luck and have fun.